Hey everybody, this is Kevin Knebel in beautiful Monument, Colorado at 7,500 feet of elevation looking out my home office window at the beautiful Rocky Mountains on a beautiful blue sky Colorado day. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are and thank you for taking a couple of minutes out of your busy day to watch this Schweiky Media Business Builder Booster incredible webinar series. Uh, I'm going to be covering how to best use LinkedIn's recommendation feature, which is a feature many people are unfamiliar with and certainly unfamiliar on how to best maximize it. Uh, I'll just give you the very quick background on me. I'm an international speaker and author, trainer and coach. I speak all over the United States and around the world on a weekly basis. I speak to organizations, associations, private companies bring me in. I do a lot of training. And I basically help a lot of people use tools like LinkedIn to increase their social selling or their sales efforts. My background is actually not in marketing. My background is in sales. I was very blessed to be the top salesperson in the world for an international consulting company and also the top salesperson in the United States for a couple of other companies uh, before I became a, a, a full-time speaker many years ago. So that's my background. So um, LinkedIn was launched back in May of 2003, so LinkedIn's actually been around for over 11 years. I'm very fortunate that I got on LinkedIn within 60 days of the launch, way back when the earth was cooling, back in 2003, so I've been doing this for over 11 years and six months, and I've been able to help many, many individuals and organizations generate millions of dollars in revenue growth, secure jobs, create strategic alliances, networking partnerships, and all kinds of wonderful business outcomes. Today we're going to talk about LinkedIn recommendations. Now most people are familiar with LinkedIn um, endorsements. LinkedIn endorsements can sometimes be a controversial topic because people can endorse you for pretty much everything from what you're good at to being able to walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm not trying to be mean, but um, it's real easy for somebody to look at somebody's LinkedIn profile and just click an endorse button. You just push a button. So you can see here I'm endorsed for a number of different things. It doesn't show beyond 99. Uh, just so I've maxed out these. I've never saw any of these. They've just been very kindly um, given to me by people. But and endorsements are fine. But I'm a big believer that a written testimonial is far more powerful than somebody just clicking a button that says Kevin's really good at plumbing or rocket science. So when you look at people's LinkedIn profiles in their experience section, you can see what they do, and then if anybody has ever recommended that person, you will see that below in the, below the job. So here in my current position as an international speaker and author, I have over 1,519 individually handwritten testimonials, which I'll show you in a few moments. In my previous positions, you can see I had in this position here 19 recommendations. In this position, 23 recommendations. In this position, three recommendations. In this position, two. In this position, 49. So what I did early on when I first started using LinkedIn over 11 years ago, when I saw that there was a recommendation feature, I said, this is going to be a gold mine. Because if you and I talk about ourselves and we say, hey, we're really good at this, that, and the other thing, that kind of sounds a little arrogant. It kind of sounds a little cocky, you know. But if other people say that we're good at something, well, that's a testimonial. That's an endorsement. That's a recommendation. That's gold. Because when somebody else says, you know, Stephen Viner, who is the guy that's recording this web this webinar, who is awesome, you know, when people say, that's Stephen Viner guy, man, he is great. He shows up early, works his butt off, goes to bed late. If you ever get a chance to work with that guy and take it, the guy's a rock star. Well, if somebody says that about Stephen, that weighs a lot more than Stephen saying it about himself. So when you get some recommendations on your LinkedIn profile, you're going to really increase um, your credibility. So I figured that out 11 years ago, and I started getting recommendations so that right now I put so much stock in what I'm telling you here today that when you actually look at my LinkedIn profile, I put it right in my headline. I put in my headline that I have over 1,630 individually handwritten recommendations on my LinkedIn profile. That's about 1,625 more than most everybody else on LinkedIn. I'm not trying to say that to be cocky or arrogant. I just figured out early, if I could get a bunch of people saying nice things about me that because they, they have gotten value from what I do, then my it becomes so simple for me 
to in, uh, increase my credibility. People aren't asking me, you know, does this guy really know what he's talking about? Well, go look at my LinkedIn profile. There's over a thousand individually handwritten testimonials, but you better block out about nine hours because that's how long it's going to take you to read them. So what I'm suggesting to you is that if you get maybe five, 10, a dozen, 15, 20 recommendations on your LinkedIn profile, you are a rock star because most people have less than a handful. You get five or 10 or a dozen, you're doing great. This is a little bit out of hand, but again, this is what I do for a living and I've been doing this for 11 years. So I would never tell you to get over a thousand. I mean, that's crazy, but I'm, I am kind of nuts. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're connected to as many people as you can be on LinkedIn for lots of different reasons. For networking reasons, job search reasons, industry reasons, you want to be connected to a lot of people. Now, you're probably going to connect to some people that you used to work with at a different company, maybe a previous boss, maybe somebody that used to report to you. You know, we all have different situations. So my simple suggestion is, you're never going to ask for a recommendation from someone who's not in a position to, to recommend you. That would be foolish, but people do it every day. I get re LinkedIn recommendation requests from people that I couldn't pick out of a lineup all the time, but I wouldn't do it if I were you. So on the desktop of your computer, if you can see my computer right now, you should have a LinkedIn-related folder. And in your LinkedIn-related folder, you're going to have some templates. Now, I'm obviously going to have a lot more templates than you are because this is what I do for a living. But I have a very simple LinkedIn recommendation request, which is written in such a way that it's non-slick, non-salesy, non-intrusive. And what you want to do is you want to put your cursor over your settings. You want to go to privacy and settings. You want to log into your account. And then you want to go to manage your recommendations. When I go into manage your recommendations, now I can ask for a recommendation from somebody. Again, I would never ask for a recommendation from somebody that was not in a position to recommend me. That would just be rude. But here where it says ask for recommendations, I'm going to open up my ask for recommendations page. Just give it a second to come up. And when it comes up, I'm actually going to ask the gentleman that's videotaping this webinar right now. So I'm going to ask for a recommendation. It's showing me all the different positions and schools in my LinkedIn profile. Because if I just reconnected with somebody that I used to work with when I used to work at NUS, I want to make sure the recommendation shows up in the right place. So I'm going to ask for a recommendation for what I'm currently doing, which is my current position. And I'm going to put Steve's name in here. Steve Einer. So here is Steve Einer. As soon as I type his name in, LinkedIn automatically starts searching through the entire database and everybody that I'm connected to. I can add up to three people at a time. It's going to ask me what his relationship to me is, and I'm going to say he's a client of mine, and he's currently the publisher at Study Breaks Magazine. I'm going to get rid of this crappy message, and I'm going to put in my own really way good message, and I'm going to say thanks for attending my recent Schweiky Media LinkedIn webinar. Now, I'm asking this from Steve because we've done a lot of work together and he's watched a lot of my webinars, so I'm in a position to ask for this. I'm so anal retentive that I get rid of the can you recommend me and I change it to would you please be so kind as to take a quick minute to recommend me. Thanks for attending my recent Shoike Media LinkedIn webinar, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to send it. That just got sent to his inbox. He's going to see that, and he's either going to write me a recommendation or he's not going to write me a recommendation. Okay. If he, but Kevin, what if he writes you something horrible? What if he says, this Kevin Knebel guy is the worst guy in the world. You never want to do business with this guy. If you see him coming down the hall, jump in the bathroom, hide, he is horrible. Well, don't worry about it. If he wrote that about me, I would just see that in my inbox and it would ask me, Kevin, would you like to post this on your LinkedIn profile or would you not like to post this on your LinkedIn profile? Well, if he said that I'm at basically a horrible human being, Odds are pretty good. I'm probably not going to post that on my LinkedIn profile, and I'm going to delete that. So don't worry about if you're asking somebody for a recommendation and they say something bad about you. It's not going to show up unless you post it on your profile. And there's nothing wrong 
with politely asking for a recommendation from somebody who's in a position to give you one. But I'm going to give you one last little tip, and it's a little pet peeve of mine. Some of the people that you're going to ask for recommendations from, you're probably in a position to recommend them, like Steve. I actually am in a position to recommend Steve because he's helped me, and, and I, of course I'm doing these webinars on behalf of Schweiki Media, but he's been a pleasure to work with over the last couple of years. So I'm totally in a position to recommend him. So understand that normally I would recommend him first, but for the purposes of today's webinar, this is the way I've done it just for time. So my, my simple tip is this. If you're in a position to recommend somebody that you're about to ask for a recommendation for, why not recommend them first? Why not make it Christmas, Hanukkah, Festivus, or Kwanzaa for somebody, Festivus for the Seinfeld fans? Why not make it, why not make somebody's day? Get up in the morning and before you ask that person for a recommendation, just recommend them, unsolicited. Hey, Stephen is a joy to work with. He's been a pleasure. He's been doing a great job recording these webinars. If you ever get a chance to work with this guy, take it. He's a class act. Stephen's going to wake up, see that in his inbox, and go, wow, that made my day. Now, one serendipity is that when you recommend somebody on LinkedIn, when they accept the recommendation, the very next page that shows up says, isn't it nice that Kevin recommended you? If you're in a position to recommend him, please click here to do so now. He's probably never going to feel as warm and fuzzy about recommending me as he is the moment after I write him a nice recommendation. But please don't read into what I'm saying, that you're doing that to be manipulative so that somebody will owe you. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying make somebody's day and recommend them before they even ask you to do it because it's a nice thing to do. So the LinkedIn recommendation feature, hugely powerful. I would even suggest if you have a dozen or a couple dozen recommendations and you have room in your headline, I would say put it in your headline because you're trying to grab people's attention when they first get on LinkedIn. They pull up your LinkedIn profile. I can absolutely assure you when people look at my LinkedIn profile and they read this and they say, Wait, what? 1,630 individual handwritten testimonials? If that doesn't get your attention, you need to check up from the neck up. So if you get a couple dozen, I would have no problem saying 50 plus recommendations or 25 plus recommendations because you're grabbing that person's attention. I hope this has been helpful. If you go to kevinknebel.com, please feel free to sign up for my free newsletter with all kinds of tips on how to use social selling, relationship marketing, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, how to combine old school, high touch relationship skills with new school social media. Again, I've helped many, many individuals and organizations generate millions of dollars revenue growth, secure jobs, create strategic alliances, feel free to sign up for my newsletter. If you go on LinkedIn and you go to your homepage on LinkedIn, LinkedIn will show you how many connections you have. I have about 19,000 first degree, almost 29 million third degree. Please feel free to send me an invitation to connect with me on LinkedIn. Because I have so many connections, when I accept your invitation, it's going to add about probably five to six million additional connections to your account, which is a big gift I'm paying forward, uh, but I'm happy to do it because I really like Schweiki, and by extension, I really like you. Just mention that when you send me the invitation to connect on LinkedIn, mention that you were watching the Schweiki Media webinar series on LinkedIn recommendations. I will be happy to accept your LinkedIn invitation, and if I can ever help you in any way, I would be more than happy to do so. So on behalf of the Schweiki Media Business Builder Booster Master of Time, Space, and Dimension webinar series, I always have fun with that name. Um, I hope you've got some nuggets out of this. If I can ever help you, please feel free to call me or email me. I give you my word as a gentleman. I will help you. Thank you very much, folks. Have a great day.